Hello, and welcome to ScanSort's quarterly earnings conference call. All lines have been placed in a listen-only mode until the question and answer session. Today's call is being recorded. If anyone has any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Mary Gentry, Vice President, Treasurer, and Investor Relations. Ma'am, you may begin. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Joining me on the call today are Mike Bauer, our Chairman and CEO, John Eld, our Chief Revenue Officer, and Jerry Lyons, our Chief Financial Officer. We will review our operating results for the quarter and fiscal year and then take your questions. We posted a CFO commentary that accompanies our comments and webcasts in the Investor Relations section of our website. Let me remind you that certain statements in our press release, in the CFO commentary, and on this call are forward-looking statements. These statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from such statements. These risks and uncertainties include, but are not limited to, those factors identified in the earnings release we put out today and in Scan Sources Form 10-K for the year ended June 30, 2020, as filed with the SEC. Any forward-looking statements represent our views only as of today and should not be relied upon as representing our views as of any subsequent date. ScanSource disclaims any duty to update any forward-looking statements to reflect actual results or changes in expectations except as required by law. During our call, we will discuss both GAAP and non-GAAP results and have provided reconciliations between these amounts in the CFO commentary and in our press release. These reconciliations also can be found on our website and have been filed. Thanks, Mary, and thanks for joining us today. We see today's call as a continuation of the call we held on July 23rd to discuss the actions we are taking to address the business impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and prepare our business for the next phase of growth. On our call, we announced our fourth quarter net sales of $636 million, which reflect negative impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic on the VAR channel and in user demand. As we worked on our fiscal year 2021 annual plan, we continued to see the impact of COVID-19 on our business. We recognized the need to match our SG&A costs with sales volume declines as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have sized the cost savings to reach an appropriate profitability level as we expect our sales volumes begin to increase throughout fiscal year 2021. At the same time, we decided it was strategically important to continue investments in our high growth, higher profitability areas. While the COVID-19 pandemic had a significant impact on our quarterly financial results, I am proud of how our teams have executed and the value we deliver to our suppliers and customers. We have taken the necessary actions to strengthen our balance sheet, improve our cost structure, and continue to drive investments in our higher margin, VAR cloud platform, and our agency business. I will now turn the call over to John to highlight what is working well in our VAR business and our agent business. Thanks, Mike. For me, the highlight of the quarter was how well our teams executed while also dealing with massive disruption from COVID-19 pandemic. We delivered exceptional specialized customer service as we transitioned to working remote. As a reminder, this is a high transaction volume business where we process hundreds of thousands of transactions quarterly with an average order size of approximately $2,000. Throughout the quarter, I was pleased to see the number of active customers and customer sentiment get better each month. Of course, we do miss seeing our customers and suppliers in person and look forward to resuming more in-person meetings. COVID-19's challenges are especially critical for small businesses, and many of our customers are small business owners. Early in the quarter, we compiled and distributed an extensive COVID-19 guide to help our partners better navigate government aid programs, including the CARES Act and PPP program resources. We realized that our customers needed even more. Working closely to support them, we put together customized financial solutions 
to help them survive and thrive during these challenging times. In addition, as a part of driving loyalty and satisfaction with our customers, we offered educational webinars designed to promote our go remote and work from home solutions. We also offered a webinar series on channel financial health, including the value of developing a recurring revenue practice. Next, I'd like to highlight some positive trends in our VAR business. During the fourth quarter, our top selling product categories included mobile computing, mobile printing, networking, video surveillance cameras, and unified communications hardware, software, and services. The new normal is driving more mobile use cases, such as applications in e-commerce, delivery, curbside pickup, and warehouse expansion. Our heritage of specialized expertise in these technologies continues to be a differentiator. In our retail and hospitality business, we are seeing growing demand for self-checkout solutions and stores and increased deployment of contactless mobile enablement, mobile enabled payment devices. And we continue to see significant growth in everything we required for work from home, from headsets to access points for Wi-Fi. And in our emerging technologies unit, we're now selling thermal imaging cameras that provide temperature measuring information solutions. Solutions like this help our partners get their customers ready for return to office requirements. I also want to highlight another part of our business that we are calling value-added deployment services. These are essentially services we attach to hardware that drive higher gross margin and profitability. In our payments business, we perform value-added services such as key injection and configuration on over 70% of devices prior to shipping. Leveraging our many years of success in payment provision, provisioning, we are expanding our provisioning services to support cloud-based service providers who need to deliver ready-to-use voice handsets directly to end-user customers. A little over a year ago, we added digital distribution capabilities with the Cascade Cloud Platform with our acquisition of Inti in July 2019. During fiscal year 2020, we expanded use of the platform for our Microsoft business in the U.S. and in Brazil. With the Cascade Platform, powered by Partner Insights, we are helping our sales partners more easily sell strategic cloud solutions and build recurring revenue. For our business in Brazil, we've been expanding our routes to market and launched a master agent practice similar to our IntelliSys business in the U.S. Our software sales increased to approximately 30% of sales in Brazil, representing cybersecurity suppliers and Microsoft Cloud. During the fourth quarter, our team in Brazil was recognized with multiple excellence in distribution awards that were voted on by our reseller community. Lastly, we continue to be excited about the growth in our master agency business. Four years ago, we acquired Intellisys, still today the largest master agency in the United States, to add a high-growth recurring revenue model for the channel. We have seen opportunities for growth in the indirect channel accelerate as suppliers recognize that the agents, community, strong customer relationships lead to slower churn rates. We have also seen cloud suppliers, UCAS, CCAS, and other X as a service suppliers choose the agent model as a strategic route to market. Intellis has captured a leading market position with these offerings for our agent sales partners. For both fourth quarter and fiscal year 2020, Intellisys had 15% year-over-year sales growth. For fiscal year 2020, Intellisys annual supplier billings exceeded $1.6 billion. Our net commissions associated with those billings, which is what we report as our net sales, totaled $57 million for the fiscal year. For our UCAS and CCAS suppliers, 
our fiscal year 2020 net commissions grew over 50%. For the fiscal year 2020, approximately 27% of our UCAS orders and 18% of our CCAS orders came from VARs. We continue to see increases in VARs joining the IntelliSys agent community. Fourth quarter was a record recruiting quarter for the IntelliSys over, for IntelliSys overall and also a record recruiting quarter for VARs. For the fourth quarter, more than half of the new IntelliSys recruits were VARs. The IntelliSys agent business is a way for VARs to add higher margin solutions and recurring revenue. This is further evidence of our strategy to deliver services that add value to both the agent and VAR communities. I'm excited about our future and see early signs of momentum and progress towards our goal of successfully delivering our fiscal year 2021 plan. Now Jerry will take you through our financial results. Thanks, John. I'll open with a review of all that has occurred since our last earnings call in May. You'll remember that we didn't provide any guidance for the fourth quarter given the uncertainty around the COVID-19 pandemic. What we did indicate back in May was that we expected our fourth quarter results to be down sequentially, both in terms of revenue and EPS. On July 23rd, we announced fourth quarter non-GAAP sales of $636 million. Additionally, on July 23rd, we announced a $30 million cost reduction plan to reduce our SG&A. On August 10th, we announced our, an agreement to sell our Latin America business outside of Brazil. With the announcement of the agreement to sell the Latin America business outside of Brazil and the progress that we have made in our efforts to sell our European business, we are now accounting for these businesses as discontinued operations. Our fourth quarter results for discontinued operations billion dollar non-cash loss to establish a valuation allowance and a four and fourteen million dollars for non-cash impairment charges. So going forward, our US GAAP numbers will be for continuing operations only. Unless otherwise indicated, this discussion reflects our results for continuing operations. For the fourth quarter, our net sales were $636 million, down 22% year over year, or down 19% organically. Foreign currency translation negatively impacted non-GAAP sales by approximately $20 million. And as expected, COVID-19 has impacted our sales volumes negatively in our wholesale bar business in both segments. This includes the acceleration of the decline in our premise-based communications business. We had a record sales quarter for our master agency business, Intellisys, where sales increased 15% year over year. Our gross profits were $74 million, down 23% year over year. The gross profit margin of 11.7% is up from 11.4% for the March quarter. Our March quarter gross profit included inventory charges following the conversion to a new warehouse management system. We implemented an action plan to address the warehouse discrepancies and we're back to more typical warehouse operations throughout the fourth quarter. During the fourth quarter, we performed our annual test of goodwill for any impairment. And as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, our test of goodwill concluded that we had an impairment in the fourth quarter, we had a pre-tax non-cash impairment charge charges of $120 million. The remaining goodwill on our balance sheet is approximately $214 million. Our SG&A expenses for the quarter, excluding a $5.7 million Brazil tax recovery, was $64 million versus $63 million year over year. So while our sales and gross margins were down, our adjusted SG&A was not down in the fourth quarter. We have addressed the SG&A cost issue with our $30 million annualized expense reduction plan. This plan, which we began implementing in July, is designed to better align the cost structure for our business 
with lower sales volumes as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the first quarter of fiscal year 2021, we expect to record an estimated pre-tax cash charge of approximately $9 million for severance and related benefits. For the fourth quarter, we recorded a $700,000 charge for the change in fair value of contingent consideration. Our final earnout payment to the former owners of Intellisys will occur later this calendar year. The amount of the contingent liability as of June 30th, 2020 was $46.3 million. The impairment charges decreased the effective tax rate for fiscal year 2020. And for fiscal year 2021, we estimate the effective tax rate to range from 28.5% to 29.5%, reflecting a higher impact from non-deductible tax items. A few comments about the full year results. Our net sales for the year were $3.05 billion, down 6% year over year, or down 5% organically. Our IntelliSys agency business grew 15% year over year. And our gross margins for fiscal year 2020 were 11.7%, down from the 12.1% the previous year, as a result of lower supplier program recognition. Our non-GAAP operating income for the year was $79 million, or 2.6% of sales, versus $129 million, or 4% in the previous year. The majority of the reduction in operating income is a result of lower sales volumes. Now turning to the balance sheet and cash flow. We generated strong operating cash flow of $74 million for our fourth quarter and $182 million for fiscal year 2020. Working capital investment declined 25% year over year. We were able to strengthen our balance sheet because of the strong and close relationships we have with our customers and suppliers. Our financial services team stays very close to our customers, more like a financial advisor, and works to develop customized financial solutions so we can continue to successfully operate together during the pandemic. Our DSO came in at 63 days versus the previous year of 58 days, and much of this increase is due to the timing of sales and the providing of customized financial solutions. We reduced our June 30, 2020 inventory by 17% year over, sorry, quarter over quarter and 18% year over year. And now I'd like to turn the call back over to Mike for a closing comment. Thanks, Jerry. We have a plan in place to advance our business and believe our close relationships with our customers and suppliers are the foundation for the value we bring to the channel. I look forward to updating you on our steps forward and our improving financial results. We will now open it up for questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you will need to press star then one on your telephone. To withdraw your question, press the bell key. Again, that's star one to ask the question. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Our first question comes from the line of Adam Tindall with Raymond James. Your line is open. Okay, thanks. Good afternoon. Mike, I just wanted to start, uh, last we spoke, the demand picture was so uncertain that I don't think it's gotten a whole lot better, but I was asking about kind of the model and if the current run rate of revenue kind of in that $650 million a quarter range that you just uh, printed or $2.5 billion annualized was the right way to think about future quarters. Just wondering, you know, as we sit here today, a month later, if you've got any more clarity on revenue or a way we kind of think about the normalized top line for your company. Yeah, thanks. We certainly um, would like to think it will start growing again from the June quarter. You know, as we looked at working on our plan for FY21, and which led us to the $30 million cost reduction exercise, as you know, we had to, in that exercise, make some assumptions about FY21. And our challenge is, of course, not knowing when we will see that business starting to come back, especially on, the obviously, the bar side of our business. Our intelligence business has continued, as we said, to do very well. We continue to see that growth in that business. 
but we do believe that our VAR business will grow in FY21. We just uh, today don't have any more visibility than we did a month ago as to how to rateably communicate that. So we're, we're on the sidelines doing everything we can to be ready for growth and making sure that we can achieve the appropriate levels of profitability, especially as we get some decent top-line growth. Okay, that, that's fair. And I just wanted to clarify on $30 million of savings. I think you're also, you know, you've talked a, a little bit about investments that you're making, which makes sense in, in the businesses that are, are working like Intellisys. Is that $30 million a net number? You know, because it's, it's about a buck a share of benefit to the EPS line. And I'm wondering if I'm, you know, not thinking about incremental investment, what kind of the net number is. Yeah, Adam. So this is Jerry. That number is a uh, is a net number. We've got some investments baked in to that uh, to that thirty million dollars. Okay, that, that's helpful. And Mike, maybe just if you could double click on those investments. And you talked about the higher margin for our cloud platform, the agency business is where where you're investing. Uh, maybe just and what we should look for to start seeing those pay off. You know, where's the expected return or outcome in the financials? Well, I'll see if I can try to help. Uh, on the intelligence side, as you know, when we make investments, we've been in two different areas. One is headcount. And headcount, traditionally for us, are people that are doing one of two things. One is um, channel managers, we call them. These are the sales teams that are calling on agents and bars more and more now to help them find customers, sell opportunities, along with our suppliers in a joint selling. As we historically, and this is in the four years we've owned Intellisys, when we add channel managers, we pick up new business, either new recruits or more business for our existing channel. However, again, the payoff for that is generally out a couple of years. It's generally where the channel managers recruit and develop, but a new channel manager, unless they come to us with some existing relationships, which, by the way, many of them do, uh, we don't see the return on that investment for a while. But we believe we need to continue to invest in them this year, just like we did last year, which will pay off over the next two to three years. The, the other part of that investment in Intellisys is in tools, IT tools, tools to help customers sell, and manage their business better through these suppliers. Uh, and I'll reference our RPM acquisition from two years ago. So those type of tools are really a differentiator, and it's why more agents and VARs choose Intellisys over our competitors. Um, and then if you think about just, uh, again, any other investments, the, as we mentioned, the VAR cloud platform, Cascade, we believe that's a way for VARs to um, – better develop their long-term business. And that business also it generally is for our subscription or SaaS business. And so you don't see the impact of that significantly in the first few quarters as you ramp up new customers. So, again, these are more long-term investments, but we have a belief that they're the right investments, which will bring us long-term value. Okay. Maybe just last one for me, Jerry. You mentioned cash flow. That's certainly been a, a bright spot. Um, just, you know, want to set proper expectations and thinking about future cash flow. Are there items that, you know, perhaps don't repeat um, that we should be thinking about as we think about fiscal 21, anything maybe to, related to, like, divested working capital or something like that that benefited this quarter? Um, is there anything that doesn't repeat? I think, Adam, mostly what's in the cash flow is uh – uh are, are normal items. I don't recall there being anything in there that's abnormal to, uh, you know, obviously we have a counter-cyclical balance sheet, so as things, as the business slowed down, we generated more cash, but there's nothing, nothing that I can think of that's unusual in there. Okay. And, and Mike, maybe updated thoughts on capital allocation. You know, from our perspective, um, I can't remember what we actually said back in um, back in May. So I'm looking to Jerry. Yeah, it's really you know it, it, that hasn't changed, Adam. It's really uh, you know organic uh, growth. Right. Um, and, and you know if there's a if there's an acquisition out there, we would do that. Um, sure. but, but none planned right now. There's yeah. no acquisitions planned. We're using our capital to fund our current operations. Correct. Got it. Thank you.
You're quite welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Keith Halson with North Court Coast Research. The line is open. Thanks. Good afternoon, guys. Um, you know, Mike and Jerry, I was hoping you guys might provide a little bit of color on perhaps July and August to give us a sense of, you know, is there any type of recovery happening from the, the downturn that we saw last quarter? Yeah, Keith, I, I think what um, what I would say, and Mike or John can chime in, but what I would say is, you know, when you look at, at how the quarter uh, progressed, so April was uh, a steeper decline. Uh, well, let me say it a different way. A April had um, was probably the low point. Uh, um, May got a little better, and June got better from there. So I think that's what I would say from a from a revenue perspective. You know, when you look year over year, the quarter got a little stronger as we went on. But obviously, we're down twenty something percent. So you know, it's it's not. Uh, um, it's a relative statement. Yeah, Keith, uh, this is Mike. I mean, from my perspective, we've got every one of our key suppliers focused on trying to find ways to stimulate growth in the channel. And so there are more programs, more initiatives underway, and as we referenced on the call, we actually signed a new vendor in the middle of the crisis, a thermal scan vendor, that we think is interesting. But well, we've got more programs that we believe we're going to have to do with the suppliers to get growth coming in the pandemic. We, we have not seen any kind of a dramatic change in the trajectory of volume at this point. Nothing that's significant. Gotcha. And then, you know, coming back to, you know, a goal you guys have had over the past several years, getting back to that 3.5 to 4% operating margins, you know, as you stand today, um, is it safe to say unless we see a dramatic impact in, or, you know, pick up in the business throughout the year, uh, you're probably unlikely to get that here in, in fiscal 21? Well, certainly for the year, I don't see that happening. For us to be able to achieve that during the year at some quarter is possible. And so we, we built in a combination of the expense reductions and what we think will be some growth in the business, number one, coming from the IntelliSys side of the business and our VAR, uh, cl uh, the cloud platform with Cascade. But really, we've got to see some growth from the traditional VAR business. And if we get that, and we certainly have modeled out, hey, what happens if we start growing again? What happens if we grow another 50 million from here or 60 million or 100 million? Then what does that do to the profitability? And so what we did by taking the 30 million out as the number, is we believe that if we get a reasonable amount of growth from here, that we will get back to the 3.5% before the end of the year, for the end of the fiscal year. Not for the year, but for a quarter before the end of the year, just so we're clear. Yep, yep no, I got it, I got it. And then, you know, the, the past few calls, you guys have talked about the investment in software. Is perhaps you provide us more color on the progress over the past, you know, few months in terms of your investments in the software and, is there one or two areas that we're going to likely see that, you know, before the others? Yeah, for sure. John talked about uh, Microsoft and our success there. We we had a big task to get the platform, uh, frankly, running in Brazil. And so after we bought the NT Cascade platform last July, job number one for those guys was getting it to work in Brazil. And, by the way, that was no easy task. That took us longer than we thought. But we had significant growth, again, in Brazil, in cloud, in Microsoft for the quarter, and that's continuing. So that's that was objective number one. Objective number two was working with some very specific suppliers. I won't name who they are, getting them up on the platform because we haven't announced them yet. But we've got a significant um, existing scan source supplier that sells a lot of um, software and services, that we needed to migrate from just selling it as a normal buy-sell through our SAP system and move it to the Cascade platform. And so we're in testing on that with that supplier right now. And for the September quarter, we'll have a significant revenue going through the platform. So we will talk to you about that in November. We're excited about it. Okay. Gotcha. And the last question for me, you know, Jerry, I appreciate some of the commentary regarding the, um, the finance department, 
but can you speak to about the credit quality that you're seeing in the quarter and, you know, are you seeing credit deteriorate and is that a concern that you perhaps have in the immediate term? Yeah, sure, Keith. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we haven't really seen uh, credit deteriorate. I mean, we've had um, we've had lots and lots of conversations, obviously, with our customers. Um, you know, and our, our team works uh, very, very closely with our customers. Um, and we we think we provide a great deal of value to those customers. Um, you know, we're constantly working with them, trying to figure out how to get deals done in a way that, that – provide value to our company and to their company. Um, and so, you know, I've been pleasantly surprised at how resilient uh, the customers have been. And, and, Jerry, Keith, if I can just add to that, I think one of the things that we talked about last quarter and this quarter was our efforts to help our best partners. And we had a seminar series, webinar series that John described on best practices and what the, uh, the financial health of a VAR who's in the recurring revenue business and how much better they are. And I believe we've got these strong relationships from this team of financial services. And by the way, Keith, that's a, that's a significant amount of headcount that we devote to making sure we have a relationship with those customers. We don't outsource that to an insurance company, credit insurance. We don't outsource it to a collection company. And so, I, as Jerry said, I have been pleased not surprised, but pleased that our partners, our customers trust us and they want to buy from us. They they will pay us and not pay some of their other um, distributor partners. And we know that that's not, that's not something you get over one quarter or two. This is because these customers on our VAR business, we've had relationships with many of them for over 10 years. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Chris McGinnis with Sedodi and Company. Your line is open. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for taking my question. I, I was just wondering if, if you could maybe just talk about the competitive landscape and, and, and maybe just is this an opportunity for you to go out and take some share of work, you know, uh, just given the difficult environment, and, uh, you know, maybe competitors can't operate as, 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 as well as you can. Thanks. Chris, I'll take it first and see if John wants to jump in, too. You know, we've got many, many competitors. Um, in Brazil, we're still the dominant player there. In the IntelliSys business, as we said, we're still by far the largest master agent in the U.S. In our VAR business, we've had a lot of competitors really take some market share in different quarters over the last few years. And I would say, from listening to our teams, that market share and wallet share is a big part of our strategy for FY21. And maybe, John, I don't know if you want to add something to that, but maybe it's uh, the way the teams are structured this year. Yeah, Chris. Hi, this is John L. Uh, thanks for your question. I would I would um, absolutely agree with Mike that uh, wallet share and market share are key priorities for us. And part of what we've built over the last several years is this ability to be able to offer on-prem, hybrid, cloud, and agency capabilities. And these are all coming together to be what we think of as real competitive differentiators to add greater value to our customer base, our partner base, uh, that drives greater loyalty, um, uh, greater consideration from them, and helps us to uh, to take, take share from competitors. Great. I appreciate that. And thanks for taking my question. Thank you. I'm not showing any further questions in the queue. I will now like to turn the call back over to Mr. Mike Bauer for closing remarks. Thank you for joining us today. We expect to hold our next conference call to discuss September 30th quarterly results on Monday, November 9th, 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's conference call. Thank you for your particip- participation. You may now disconnect. Everyone have a wonderful day.